There we go. That looks like we've got sound now. <laughs> the excitement of technical adventures in the office in a tent. How about now? Can you guys hear me now? Everything is. <laughs> Everything is so delayed. I don't know. We have static. Oh, excellent. Yay. <laughs> happy Friday, Mona Carrie. I'm so happy to see you here. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you guys so much for uh, dealing with my technical difficulties. I appreciate you for sticking around. Yay! How is my wrist feeling? Glad to see you are doing great. My wrist is feeling awesome, but then again, I haven't done anything strenuous in a while. Um, the last time that I remember having a lot of issues with it was um, last year on the captor, which was pretty much like immediately after I was told that I was allowed to ride again. So it kind of makes sense that I was having issues, um, especially deciding to do a BDR right after I got told that I was allowed to ride again. It probably was not the smartest idea, um, especially in March when we definitely camped in colder than advisable conditions. Um, but yeah, thank you for asking. I appreciate you. Let's see, the chat's going so fast. Oh, I'm so happy you all are all here. That's so awesome. Hi, Kristen. Hello. Mohawk Mike, Jeff, Scott. I'm from Kenya, holy bejeebus. That is awesome. Australia, hi Paul, Lynn, and my mom is here. Dad's phone is getting it faster than my computer. <laughs> that sounds about right. I was watching the Armchair Adventure Festival this morning and uh, I in between I would be like, I would pick up, I would start watching it on my phone so I could go around the house and do other things. And like when I would start it on my phone, it would be like a solid like 30 seconds ahead of like what my computer was doing. It was hilarious. Did any of you catch the Armchair Adventure Festival this morning? Uh, um, let me know. Uh, listening to Steph Jevons was pretty awesome. <laughs> Yay, Motorcade! Rosemary's in the house! Yay, Rosemary! And Patty out back! Yay! <laughs> I'm looking for thank you Scott it's good to see you in the chat hi Steven currently on a world tour on the bike got locked down in Nicaragua oh man I hope that they're treating you okay I hope that you found a safe place to hunker down um, I know that's been a big issue for a lot of overland adventurers right now and Oregon motorcycle is here yay Michael right on two wheels is here oh all of my friends are here this is the best you must have some pretty good batteries um so <laughs> for reference um so i've got this mic is hooked up to my main computer which is big up on the desk the laptop is plugged into a plug over there the camera is plugged into my big desktop which is why every once in a while i'll look up because my live view is on the desktop the laptop is down here so that i can read your guys comments because i can't read that far away. <laughs> Hi Nathan! Hi Amanda from Helena! Yay! My Montana peeps! Oh, thank you Sandy! <laughs> Yay! Smash the like button! Yeah, that's right! <laughs> awesome! <laughs> yeah! Yes, everybody say hello to my mom and my dad. Dad's watching too. Papa Zito is here. Oh, don't don't say that. He he'll get angry at me. Papa Zito is my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> hello from Kuskia, Idaho. Yeah, I go through there all the time. <laughs> Man, I wish I would have known you were there last time. I had to camp in the uh, city park in Kamii. That would have been nice. Rocky Mountain Roll is what standard weekend. Nick, do you mean like what weekend it is? Is that what you're asking? Um, as of right now, it's scheduled for July 31st through August 3rd. 
Um, I'm still waiting to figure out if we're still going to be able to do that this year. Um, I My final deadline for being able to tell if we're going to have to cancel or not is um, mid-June because that's when I have to finalize insurance and porta potties and that kind of stuff. Um, so you'll know definitively by June if we have to cancel or not. Um, keep my fingers crossed. Everybody cross their fingers because I really don't want to cancel. <laughs> Sean and I didn't, didn't catch it. What, what didn't you catch? Hello from Colorado. I still need to ride there so bad. Texas. Hi, Ron. Woo. I'm funny. I'm glad. I'm, I'm happy that I can amuse somebody. That's very important. From Detroit. Hi, Wayne. Nope. Did the Nora on her bike lunch video. Yes, I watched the first part of uh, on her bike, um, Nora and Leah Rick, and uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember everybody who was in it, but it was awesome. I watched the first part, and then I hopped over to the Armchair Adventure Festival so that I could watch Steph Jevons because she is incredible. Did y'all see the um, presentation? I think his name was Jeremy or something. He literally ran from like Vancouver down the down South America. It, it's insane. I dig the tent. Me too. Actually, fun fact, this is the Mountain Smith Morrison 2 tent that I did the whole pilgrimage on. I haven't actually set up this tent since 2017, 2000, yeah, 2017 was the last time I set up this tent and um, I forgot all of the amazing features in this tent, so it makes so much more sense why I was able to live in it for a solid, like, two and a half months. Um, I don't know. I, I like that the floor footprint is, like, just a smidge smaller. I know that sounds kind of funny than the Iron, um, Iron Horse 2 tent that I have. Um, it just means that I can squeeze it into more places, for example, my office. Um, but, like, it's the perfect size, really, because I can still fit all of my stuff in here. Um, I know that I'm a giant dork because I, I set up my new air mattress and my sleeping bag and everything. <laughs> um, oh, for the record, I did get a new air mattress. I wasn't able to patch all the holes in my X-Ped, which I'm super bummed about. I'm still working on it. I'm not giving up, but I just bought a new air mattress um, to have as backup for when we can go camping again if I haven't managed to find all the holes in the X-Ped. The new one is the Big Agnes Insulated Q-Core. Um, it's the little thin one, uh, so it packs up to about the same size as my Edsped, but it has a higher R value, which I'm super excited about since I am a very cold sleeper. <laughs> Hi from Wyoming! Hi, Nuthead! Look at the things we do for live streams, for real. I just figured the tent would be a better background, you know? <laughs> Backyard camping. Well, did you go camping in your office or your living room when you were a kid? I am ashamed to tell you how many times that I've camped in my living room just so that I could, like, test sleeping pads and that kind of stuff. Montreal, hi, Mark. <laughs> Modern day camping. Yeah, that's that's about what it's come to at this point. Um, I guess I could be camping in my backyard, although I, c I don't think I could live stream in my backyard. Um, at least not with my big camera. I'd have to be for my webcam, which... Um, I know you won't believe me, is so much worse <laughs> than what you're seeing right now. Um, I'm writing a couple of days a week, keeping away from humans. That's good. <laughs> yeah, all the hellos. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> My dad is adorable. Yes. <laughs> I'm wondering what is, whoa, the chat just went, whoops. I'm wondering what is going on with Rocky Mountain Roll and the pandemic stuff, will it be delayed? Thoughts? I think that I answered that question for you. Um, yeah, all the fingers crossed, yes, excellent. That's because I'm going looking at 2021, yeah. Um, so uh, what I was thinking about doing, and you can guys let me know if you think this is dumb or not, um, but my plan was to, uh, if we do have to cancel it this year, I can refund those who need to be refunded, but um, for everybody else who would still like to come, um, what I'm thinking about is just like transferring your ticket from 2020 to 2021, um, so you'll already have a ticket for next year if we do have to cancel this year, um, and you'll just 
have your spot saved for next year. That's, <laughs> that was my plan because I, yep, that, that seemed to be like the most logical thing to do. If we do have to cancel it, I'm still hoping that we don't have to do that. Um, I didn't catch the armchair stream you mentioned, just to clarify. Oh, thank you, Sean. Uh, Rick. Hi, Amanda. Kiwi, Gravel, Roadie, Rick, and the Trudy says hi from New Zealand while eating our lunch. Yay! I'm so glad you guys could make it. That's awesome. Silver Spring, Maryland. You guys are from all over the place. This is amazing. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> Wit, Wit says, uh, I'm sure it brings back memories. Um, yes. Uh, specifically, <laughs> weathering a storm where it half bent over on me, but that's because I didn't really... I didn't have enough time to stake out lines. I just staked out the four corners. So the, the when the wind hit it from the side, the whole tent was like this. It was, it was a good time. <laughs> yeah. Moto says hi. Thank you, Chris. Southern Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Thank you, Chuck, so much. Thank you. Hmm. I appreciate you. Oh my goodness. Awesome. Roman, beautiful in New Mexico, heading to Georgia. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for the super chat, Roman. Thank you. Um, go back to where I was in the... <laughs> John from Canada. How's it going? I'm doing just about as well as anybody else can be doing right now, I think. <laughs> Um, still thankful that Jonathan is still working. Um, that's a good thing. And, uh, thankful that I have the opportunity to apply for unemployment, however much of a nightmare that is right now. Um, probably looking at, like, five weeks before I get a check, but that's fine. <laughs> Being grateful for, like, every little bit that I got, especially my patrons right now who have been made it possible for me to buy groceries. Um, and keep the power on, essentially. Uh, just have no end of gratitude for everybody who supports me on Patreon and everybody who watches my videos every week, even if you can't support me monetarily right now, which I totally understand, um, just watching my videos and hitting that like button and commenting means so much to me right now. Just hearts, all the hearts. BMW Rally in Great Falls was rescheduled for 2021. Yeah, yeah. It seems like a lot of events have been either scooched to August or October or September. Um, which to me, like, seems like it's going to be a very busy fall. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of like, I don't, you nope. I kind of wonder about like the attendee level on a bunch of those events since like everything is getting pushed to the fall. So like you have to pick and choose what events you're going to go to instead of everything being stretched out over the year, like it has been. So I'm really curious to see how that's going to go. Just stop by for the day. Well, thank you for being here, Roman. I appreciate you. My wife just got a bike, Suzuki S40. Heck yes! Did you know that Doodle on a Motorcycle's first bike was a Suzuki S40? If you don't watch her, you definitely should. She's super rad. Um, she, I think she's a street triple now? Street triple, speed triple. I can never tell the difference between the two. Um, but she's a triumph fangirl now, which is awesome. Didn't get to go camping as a kid. Oh, Rosemary. Well, I hope you get to do lots of camping now. Well, after all this is over. You know what I mean. We set up our kids' tents multiple times within the last couple weeks. My son even asked to put it on his bed one night. <laughs> yes. I remember at one point when I was a kid, I, for the record, I had like five other siblings. Um, and at one point, like... Uh, <laughs> My sister and I made a fort out of our mattresses and slept underneath of it. <laughs> it was awesome. Sean says, next stream, set up dining room chairs, couch cushions, sheets. Yes. Giant blanket fort. <laughs> I want to buy, buy that old turquoise Dodge pickup. <laughs> You're going to have to talk to Dad about that. I'm not sure that he'll give it up. Love your channel. Thank you, Chuck. Hi, Jess! Yay! It's so good to see you here! How's the CB running? The CB is running pretty good. I haven't actually started up in the last two weeks or so. Um, just the ones to, like, 
move it out of the garage uh, so I can move stuff around. Um, but the CB is solid. Like, I have never had any doubts about the CB, even parked for, like, quite a while. I think the last time that it was parked for a while was 2018, um, when I primarily was riding the Tiger, and the CB had been parked for, like, four solid months without me starting it. I felt like a terrible bike parent, and I went over, she started right up. No, no, like, no hesitancy. Like, bam. The Tiger, on the other hand, does not like sitting for a very long time, so... That's the one that I'm more worried about. <laughs> Love from North Carolina. Hi, Tim. Oh, wow, there aren't, there's 95 people watching. <laughs> That's insane. Hi, everybody. Dutch Cam. Oh, it's so good to see you. Dave here from Vancouver, British Columbia. We met at camera camp. Yes. How, hope you're doing well. I hope you are doing well. I hope all of my camera camp buddies are doing well right now. That's so cool. 5,000 square feet of warehouse to camp in, so I ride from corner to corner to travel again. That's brilliant. I think that you should document your little ride around your warehouse and add it to the um, uh, back, not backcountry, backyard discovery route forum on ADV Rider. That would be awesome. Woo! Lost my spot, sorry. We'd be interested in doing a video together. We can choose topic. Um, you can send me an email as my advice dot at gmail dot com to ask me about collabs. Almost a hundred beeps, yeah! Greetings from Livingston. Hi, Michael. It's ninety eight here in Texas today. Isn't that a little low for Texas? <laughs> ask me this question a lot? I feel like I get this question a lot when I'm coming to Canada. Uh, when I can? I, I want to come to Canada. I don't have current plans to come to Canada, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, my next, like, goal is to go to some of the states that I haven't been to before, including Colorado. I have, like, got the scratch off mat in my garage now so that you can see some of the states that I've been to and it's like all on the west coast. Um, to clarify, those are all states that I've been to on the bike, like not just like in general. Um, cause if you want to count that, then like I've been to Missouri and Kansas and, um, Wisconsin, but I haven't been there on the bike, so I didn't include them on the map, but I still haven't been to Colorado and I feel ashamed that I haven't been. So like, that's, that's my goal to get crossed off. Um, sooner than later. Yay! Eastern Montana says hi! Hello! Bye. I'm Daryl, and I missed a lot of your Q&As, but I'll rewatch. I'm in Texas. Thank you, Daryl. Yeah! Watching from Nebraska. Everything is shoved into August for- yeah, exactly. A lot of stuff's getting shoved into August. I know that I just got an email from the Bays right out. Uh, can, like, ladies, and they've moved a lot of their stuff into October, um, which is when their main event is anyway, but, like, the, the East Coast and the dirt got moved to October, I think, and September. Yeah, Doodle is awesome. Got 20% pay cut. I'm so sorry. That sucks. Thank you, Nick. If, Nick, if I hadn't said yes, thank you already. Thank you. You're amazing. I appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat. Are you getting the hankering for a new bike? If so, what? Um, I don't, like, at this moment, like, have a huge desire for a new bike. Um, obviously, a lot of people have been selling their bikes right now, um, and a lot of them are dirt bikes, and this tiny part of me is like, oh, this is like a gap in my collection that I want to fill so bad. Um, if for nothing else, just to practice skills without a lot of the consequences of uh, dropping a bigger bike. Um, uh, I did like a skills day at Nathan and Chris's house um, for the love of knobs house. Oof, sorry, knock the camera. Uh, and I was able to practice on a uh, little Kawasaki and it was, it's so much easier to practice skills um, on a smaller bike. But yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly what I, I lean towards the WR250 just um, because it's like a tractor. 
and because I am friends with the guy who runs a Yamaha dealership in Hamilton, so if I was gonna get another bike, I'd really want to support him if I couldn't buy used from a friend. Um, but right n <laughs> officially, I'm not getting a new bike anytime soon. Patty, you might go backyard camping tonight. Yes! Do it! So far, Sturgis and Laconia are still on, but who knows if that'll change. Yeah. I, yep. Being back east, I seem to be missing out on a slew of biking adventures. <laughs> I mean, you guys just got the Northeast BDR and the Mid-Atlantic BDR. That's, that's, you have some adventures over there, yeah. S40 is awesome. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Patty. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. This is beer money. You can only buy beer with it. <laughs> so, so does that mean that I can get cider with it? Or whiskey? How about whiskey? Can we, like, let's come midway on whiskey. Can we do that? You're making me thirsty. <laughs> Rosemary, I went, uh, woke up home and didn't know where I was after going camping. That's... <laughs> So accurate. I've been there, definitely. Woo. Travis, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. Late to the party. I'll catch the beginning after the end. Glad to see you're doing well. Hope to see you start a summer adventure soon. Me too. Oh my goodness. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Um, I, I know at the beginning of all this, like I said, that I wasn't writing because I didn't want to risk it. And I... I still believe I still don't want to ride off road right now because I think it's a little bit uh, too much risk for me to take on at the moment. Um, but I think that if Oregon extends their closure like end of June, I would probably start um, doing uh, short slab rides. Um, probably not into the mountains, but um, definitely itching. My feet are itching. You know we all love you. Oh, thank you, Nathan. <laughs> What's good? Tents. Tents are good. <laughs> you don't need to go anywhere, novel, Mike. You live close to Highway 12 and Lolo Pass. It's true. Um, I wouldn't say that I live super close, uh, but a decent closeness, that's true. Me and my wife recently purchased a new compact tent and the small compact chairs, and we're going to start camping on the bike this year. You're pretty... Oh, that's awesome, Mr. Groglin. I'm so excited for you guys. That's so cool. Send me pictures. Ah, yes. Okay, Kristen just bought a small dual sport XT225. Just changed the oil and put new brakes on tonight. That's awesome. W2 Chris says WR250 is an awesome choice. Do it. <laughs> You're a terrible influence. You're such an enabler. Both of you are. <laughs> I love you, so I have been considering new bikes for your collection. What would you add? New, old. Um, I, yeah, I, I definitely, like, I don't see any sport bikes in my future for a very long time. If I was going to add anything, it's going to be a dirt bike. Um, I can't really think of anything else to add right now besides that. Um, used to love the horse tooth saloon. Yeah. Keep doing what you Thank you, Saddle Tramp. It's good to see you in the comment section. That's awesome. Thank you for being here. Woo. <laughs> Sorry if I missed some of your questions, you guys. I'm trying to catch up here. <sighs> let's talk tents. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do talk tents. Like, what is your favorite tent brand? Um, are you a one-person, two-person, or a three-person tent kind of person? I'm a two-person tent kind of person. I have tried one person. I ended up giving it to my brother. Um, uh, I love Mountain Smith as a brand. Um, that's what this one is, Mountain Smith Morrison 2. I do have the Iron Horse Gear Tent 2, and I had their one-person tent. That's the one that I gave to my brother. Um, they're a very small brand, but they're super awesome because they um, their tents are literally designed with saddlebags in mind, so their tent poles are a lot shorter, um, so it'll fit in saddlebags. Um, kind of the way that, like, bikepacking tents are designed, except the price tag is a lot more reasonable um, with Iron Horse Gear tents. 
Uh, and then I have the Next Adventure House brand, Wilderness Technology. Um, oh my goodness, North North Duo Tent. And that's the one that I took to Baja. That's the one, I um, can't remember if that's the one I took on the cab door or not. I think it is. Um, that's a solid tent too. Very reasonably priced if you're looking for like an entry level tent that's a little bit better than a Walmart tent. <laughs> Um, that still has like two walls, so you don't have to worry about condensation. Um, and like it's built very similar to the Mountain Smith Morrison tent um, with the pockets on counter sides um, and the gear. Oh, I didn't see that this has fallen down. Uh, but that's like the majority of my experience with tents. Like, I, I also like started with um, the classic like Walmart tent, that was my very first tent. I don't recommend that tent at all. It was horrific. It was so bad. The condensation was just gnarly. So I definitely recommend getting a two-wall tent if you can't afford it. Um, two-wall tents tend to be around the $100 mark to start off with. Um, and I totally get, like, if you're getting into camping, that's not always in a reasonable area for a lot of people. I know it wasn't for me when I first got started, so, like, no judgment whatsoever. But if you can, save just a little bit of money um, to get a two-wall tent, so it's going to last you a lot longer. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I have been looking at the, um, Big Agnes, uh, whoa, 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 I didn't see the, thank you, Saddle Tramp, keep doing your thing, thank you so much for the super chat, I just saw that, <laughs> thank you, Billy, for the super chat, you guys are awesome, for the cider fund, yes, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I feel like we all need dirt bikes during this time. Yes. Dirt bikes would be excellent during this time just to practice in the backyard. Like, yeah. Highway 12 is an awesome road for two wheels. Yes, it is. The little motorway above Highway 12 is also a good ride on two wheels. <laughs> two person. Yeah. I'm starting motor camping this year and I'm thinking about the one and a half one for Bro East. Yeah. <laughs> Bike travel friendly tents. Yeah. Iron Horse gear for sure. Definitely check them out. Um, uh, cause that, that's definitely like one of the more bike friendly tents that I've, uh, tried out that are reasonably priced. Like the big this tent that I was talking about, that's the bike, uh, the bike packing version is like, I think it's like the copper spur. Um, and it packs down a lot smaller. Like the temple size is about the same as the Iron Horse gear tent. Um, but like the fabric of the tent packs down a lot smaller. Um, but at the same time, those tents are like, what, like $400 versus the Iron Horse Gear tent was, which starts like around the hundred for the one person tent, I think. And it's, um, a little under 200 for the two person. Um, so reasonable for a tent like that, um, with the poles designed specifically for uh, getting it into your saddlebags. I, like, normally, like, when Carl and I used to do, like, Carl's Mystery Rides and that kind of stuff, when we did scouting missions, I always threw the Iron Horse gear tent in my bags because it was small enough that I could just, like, throw it in there and not worry about having to pack an extra duffel on the back of my bag, on the back of my bike, <laughs> um, because it would just fit in my saddlebags. I, I normally don't take the saddlebags off my bike. <laughs> Two-person tent. I dream of North Face. Yes. Hotel. <laughs> no judgment. Man, if I had the money, I would definitely be a hoteler. Uh, a while ago, somebody asked me if I was a, like, a camp to ride or a ride to camp person. And I am such, like, a camp to ride person. Like, I, I like, on one end, like, I do enjoy camping, but, like, I don't go camping for camping's sake. Like, I'm always, like, on a mission to get somewhere, and camping is, like, the cheapest, mo most efficient option to, like, stay somewhere instead of having to stay in a hotel. Um, I hope that you all, uh, still accept me as a photo camper, now that I have admitted that. I <laughs> Two-person Big Agnes Copper Spur. Yeah! Lone Rider Tent. Awesome! Do you have the little one-person little rider tent, uh, Angela? Or do you have the big one where you can, like, ride in? Uh, those look so cool. Sandy asks, how is Lazarus? Lazarus is doing awesome. Um, so I don't know if you watched the, like, love letter love letter to an old bike. Um, but I finally got to just 
took bit the bullet and uh, reopened up the carbs and uh, fixed the float problem. She's still running a little rough, so I'm having a feeling that I am going to have to reopen up the uh, carbs to make sure that all my butterflies are <laughs> opening at the r same rate. Uh, <laughs> uh, I haven't done that yet because I've been doing other things. Um, I thankfully do have uh, some commissions that are still happening. Uh, so I've been focusing on that and creating video content for you guys. Um, but yeah, Lazarus is doing fine. Uh, <laughs> she, she starts now, which is a huge improvement over the last year or so. <laughs> two, two person tent is nice. Yeah, it's good, it's good to have a space to put all of your gear in. Um, supposedly, Gary says that he could fit his stuff in the one person tent that I gave him, but I'm not sure that I believe him. I just ordered a trail, a trail tail adventure trailer made for the backwoods and single track riding. That's awesome, Roger. I'm planning on the big ride sometime this summer. Hope to see you on the road. Yeah! There was a couple people who showed up with trailers to Rocky Mountain Roll last year. It was very cool. Um, one of them has like a pop-up tent in the trailer, which was like, that, that would be so ideal to me. I don't think the uh, CB would enjoy pulling a trailer, though. <laughs> we use the Kelty TN3. Awesome. I have... Ooh. I don't know what you've had. Thank you so much, Jess, for the super chat. Thank you. Love your channel. Hope we get to meet up and ride someday. Me too, though. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I spent so much time in California last year. I'm so bummed I didn't know you then. Where was I? Lost my spot. Thank you, Billy, for the super chat. Oh, I, oh, that's, I said that already. So I'm definitely in the middle here. There we go. I found it again. I have an older Kelty with cut down poles to fit in pannier. Awesome. So did you cut the poles down yourself? Like, how did you do that, Thomas? 40 Times Around is also a great channel. A lot of bike camping stuff. Yep. I, I know Tim. <laughs> We've done a couple collabs together, actually. Uh, he stayed at my house while he was up in Portland. <laughs> but yes, Tim is awesome. He has an awesome channel. Lots of great content. Um, he just posted an update today about how he's doing and he's in Phoenix right now. Somebody else asked me that today. Like, where is Tim? How is he doing? And I'm kind of like, I'm not his keeper. <laughs> Jeff, I usually buy backpacking gear for the bike. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, bikepacking gear, uh, backpacking gear is an excellent w route to go just because it tends to be a lot more lightweight, uh, which makes the handling on the bike a lot better. Um, but yes, definitely, like, and it packs down a lot smaller because it's all meant to go into a backpack that goes on your back that you have to trek around with. Um, this reminds me we need a new tent before summer. <laughs> I talked about Blacktop Devil. Well, I, I'm sorry I reminded you, but also glad because <laughs> you can find a new tent. Me too, that's why I subbed to him, learn a lot. Yeah, he's full of information. Cabela's ultralight because of points. Oh, you got, you mean like you have a reward cards with them, Jeff? Barb Weeks, Jan wants to know what is a two wall tent? Excellent question. Um, so I'm gonna use this tent as an example. Haha, <laughs> I have props. <laughs> um, so most two wall tents, you're gonna have like uh, something like this that has mesh. And then, oh, sorry, you guys. Uh, it has a separate rain fly to keep water out of the mesh. So this is a separate piece of fabric. I just kind of laid it over here so you can't see my bookshelf behind me. <laughs> um, but the point of that is that uh, ventilation can go through the mesh um, and kind of, uh, if, there, if you do get any kind of condensation during the night, um, it uh, kind of goes on the rain fly instead of, building up on the mesh, so if you shake the tent in the middle of the night, it doesn't rain on you <laughs> because of the condensation that builds up. Um, most uh, two wall tents like this are also going to have ventilation options up top that you can prop open during the night, um, and they're normally angled, so if it's raining, water is not going to come into that vent, um, but you can also let air escape, which is important for keeping condensation to a minimum um, when temperatures are fluctuating during the night. I hope that answers your question. Um, a single wall tent isn't going to have mesh like this. Um, for example, like the Walmart tent that I had um, is like all this kind of solid nylon material. 
and they had a very small area of mesh near the top and then you had like this itty bitty tiny rain fly that clipped to the top to cover that mesh area um, to make it waterproof. <laughs> Um, a lot of condensation built up in that built up in that tent because it was single wall and there was no room for ventilation to happen. Like that tiny area of mesh in the top was just like not enough. Um, I hope that explains it a little bit better. I got an Amazon tent. It was like eighty dollars, but I haven't been able to use it. Let me let me know how that goes. <laughs> My marmot tent six years of use and still in good shape yeah marmot is an amazing brand they're awesome i personally will never diss a walmart tent again i bought it for 30 dollars. my nephew and i spent 16 nights in it last summer one of those nights was pouring rain in yellowstone not a drop of water that's awesome travis i'm so glad you guys were able to stay dry <laughs> angela how do you get over camping in the wilderness with cougars and bears <laughs> just starting out need advice um I think uh, knowledge is your best weapon in this case uh, scenario. I know that like I didn't have a lot of fear going into that just because I grew up in Montana. So like a lot of the information that you need to learn, I grew like grew up n like learning if that makes sense. Um, I took hunter safety in middle school, so I learned a lot about like how you're supposed to behave when you encounter a bear or a cougar or anything like that. How you're supposed to deal with your food. Um, so if you can. Uh, I think I do have resources linked in the what is dispersed camping video um, uh, down in the description for like how to treat your food when you're camping in, in a bear active area. Um, cougars, <laughs> it's just kind of like being aware of your surroundings, um, uh, especially like in Montana, cougars are very attracted to super rocky areas. Um, so you don't necessarily want to camp in an area like where you're down a ravine and there's a lot of big rocks um, so that you're in the bottom of it. So uh, because that's kind of like an area they'd like to go to because it's easy for them to attack. Um, don't let that freak you out. <laughs> it's more about just like being aware of your surroundings. We're making sure that you're like listening to everything that's going on around you. Um, cougars kind of sound uh, like crying babies um, a little bit if they're like whimpering and that kind of stuff. Um, Go do research to somebody who's more knowledgeable than me. Um, most of this information I learned when I was a kid, I'm sure there's better information out there now. Um, but I think the most important thing that you can do is make sure that you don't cook um, or eat in your tent if you're going to camp in a bear active area because that can leave food, food smells in your tent that will draw bears and even rodents to your tent. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, make sure that you uh, cook food and eat it like 200 feet away from your tent um, and downwind so that, you know, the food smells aren't just like being drafted up to your tent again. And uh, if you can, bear hang. Um, if you have room, the best thing you can do is get a bear vault. Um, I know that a lot of um, outdoor recreation organizations are suggesting more people carry bear vaults instead of hanging their food because not a lot of people hang their food properly. Um, so bears are still getting into it and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry if that wasn't very useful. Um, definitely just like read as much as you can and like knowledgeable stuff, like not a uh, sensationalist, like this is how you're going to die. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. Just like how you should behave if you do encounter them. Um, and yeah, I think your best option definitely if you know you're gonna be camping in a bear active area is to pay to camp at a campground um, because most of the campgrounds in bear active areas are gonna have specific food storage just for your stuff to keep the bears out of it. And they'll have um, specific like trash storage so bears can't get into the trash. Um, and a, a good side effect is most of them also have heated bathrooms. So that's a good thing. <laughs> um, I hope that helps. <laughs> Hike and bike, two person poles fit in saddlebags. Yeah! I have never heard of that brand. That's awesome. I'll have to check them out. Lone Rider has some good, nice tents, but they're kind of pricey. Yeah, they're a little bit on the expensive side. Um, uh, <laughs> Scotty always uses a Walmart tent. <laughs> you know, no judgment. Like, I I just don't like them. 
Airbnb, yes. This is why I'm building a camper van that can carry my bike on the back. Solid roof, comfy bed, definitely Justin, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, get one of the hotels to sponsor you. You know, I wouldn't mind working for Best Western. I know that uh, Hey Nadine has been, uh, has a sponsorship or been working directly with Best Western for a long time, and I'm like, that looks awesome. <laughs> Plus they have like hotels all over the place. I love camping, but my husband does not, so we do more uh, hostels. Yeah, definitely, that's a good compromise for sure. Hi, I'm Nick, and I'm on a 12-step to hotel program. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Scotty's awesome. Go without him. <laughs> I'll be putting up my monster for sale soon. Yeah, riding two wheels, go uh, <laughs> hook up with Donna so we can get her monster. REI Passage 2, definitely. REI has a lot of solid tents that are pretty reasonably priced. Um, there is a reason that a lot of them end up on the PCT because they're excellent tents. Angela, I'm totally not biased because I work for them, by the way. <laughs> the big one was a present for my husband and daughter. Love it. My bike sleeps with me. That's awesome, Angela. That's so rad. I'm old and cranky. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> oh gosh, I just lost it. How many miles on Lazarus now? Um, oh gosh, I think at the end of the pilgrimage we rolled over 30, I rolled over 30,000. But Lazarus belonged to two other people before I got her. I think that when I got her she was around the 20,000 mile mark, something like that, 19,000 miles, somewhere around there. Um, so I think that she is around 30, 31,000 now, 32,000 something like that. But like for an 80s bike, that's pretty incredible. Uh, <laughs> Where was I? Prefer hotels. Cabela's ultralight three person poles break down to 16 inches to pack pretty small. That's awesome, Jeff. Not that I recommend it, but the last time we went motor camping, we had our REI Kingdom 8. Plenty of room for all of our gear and the bike even. Dennis, like, the eight-person tent is actually fantastic for rallies. Um, the year five, I think, if they threw it out, the first year that I went, I ran into some of the Wind Sisters, and they had, like, an eight-person tent. Like, we all just, like, hung out and changed in, and that <laughs> was so awesome. You can definitely make a lot more friends if you come to a rally with a giant tent. Or even like a sunshade, um, or lots of food. Make a lot of friends at rallies if you bring lots of food. <laughs> what do you think is an entry level traveling bike? I recently got a motorcycle and I'm waiting to get my license from Nathan. Um, I think entry level traveling bike is like whatever you got. <laughs> uh, like Lazarus wasn't considered an excellent traveling bike by a lot of people. She was not in the least reliable, but I did it anyway. Um, there's been examples of dudes who've ridden from Sydney to London on posty bikes, um, which are essentially mopeds. <laughs> and, like, you can't imagine, like, riding that large of a distance on a moped. At least I can't, but they did it. Um, so, like, any bike that you have is the best option to start with, in my opinion. Um, obviously, there are are better things. There's farkles that you can get. There's like bikes with better suspension or a higher level of CCs so that you're not being rattled to death. But you know, you could also argue that traveling without all of those like extra amenities makes it a lot and more interesting. Um, definitely to tell the story later might not be very comfortable in the moment, but <laughs> I, you know, it just depends on what you need. Yeah. <laughs> Lowrider two person tent plus your bike. Love it. Yeah. Single wheel type. Oh, I cool. He was talking about the pop up trailer. Mine is a Harley. Yes, Rosemary. 
If Lazarus is still not running by Rocky Mountain Roll, I promise you that I will bring my special tools and give her love. Uh, that will be a little bit hard because Lazarus is in Portland and Rocky Mountain Roll happens on my family's branch. So, <laughs> um, I will try to bring her so that if she's not running, you can give her some love. I, it'll be fine. She's, it just hasn't been a huge priority because, like, it's not like I can go anywhere with her right now. Um... Yes, I do. I have Tim's shirt on. Thank you for noticing, Jeff. I was wondering how long it would take somebody to catch on. Uh, Nathan says, you can get shorter poles on Amazon for cheap. How to do that for my RA Passage 2 to fit it in my panniers. That's awesome. I did not know that. Thank you, Nathan. Rosemary is building a teardrop to pull behind my road glide. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, Chris. Bye, you have. Yes. I got yours and FTA stickers on my windscreen. Oh, that's so awesome, Scott. Oh. Do you take a book along with when you travel? I used to take physical books along. Um, thank you for the question, Nick. I kind of switched to audiobooks. Um, I can't remember if I brought a book on the pilgrimage or not. I probably did. I think that I had... Ted Simon's Jupiter's Travels with me on the pilgrimage. I think it with me went with me the whole way. And I think that I only read like 10 pages out of it the whole time. Um, <laughs> I, I tended to get to camp a little bit late. So all that I really had time to do was set up my tent, make food and go to bed. Um, like by the time the sun went down and I don't enjoy like sitting with a headlamp on to, and reading in the tent. Um, and I was also carrying around tablets so that I could transfer all the footage from my helmet cam and my camera onto an external hard drive, um, like, every night just to make sure that I had backups. Um, <laughs> so that took up a lot of my downtime, uh, so I didn't read a whole lot during the trip. Um, I think eventually, like, I did start listening to audiobooks and, uh, on the, while I was writing, uh, with headphones in, and, uh, that was awesome. And, like, that I've definitely like solidified like my love for listening to audiobooks um, while I'm on a long trip, especially like big long highway stretches. It's just it's nice. <laughs> it also means that I've been able to read like so read so many more books than I would have been able to consume like in the last like three years or so. Um, yeah, I have a book everywhere. <laughs> nice rosemary. I can't tell. I'm pulling it most of the time. Oh, about the trailer. Reward, reward points. Yes, that's what I thought. Oh, Angela, thank you. 52, I'm just starting my journey exploring on two wheels. That is awesome. That is so rad. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, I love that you guys are just having a little conversation in the chat. That's so rad. I love this. This is the best. Do you carry a firearm on your travels? Michael, no, I do not. Are you locked hard panniers, bare vaults? Are locked hard panniers, bare vaults from David? I uh, don't, no, they are not, they don't count as bare vaults. <laughs> Especially aluminum, yeah, no. <laughs> One of the reasons I got my concealed carry for, was for bears, yeah. I do, I have, yes, uh, I, d I have an Ursac as well. Um, that I carry um, less for bear issues, more for mice issues. <laughs> it's bedtime. Bye, Petty Nerd. I feel up at 4 a.m. Catch you. Bye. Thank you for being here. You're probably gone already. I'm sorry. No food in your tent. Put peanut butter on the per put peanut butter on the person's feet. You're camping with. That's terrible. Wow, I'm sorry I'm so behind you guys. <laughs> Piston slaps here, yay! <laughs> Not much, you didn't miss much. No. <laughs> Mainly just talking about tents, I think, um, and camping in bear and cougar areas. 
I do love my snacks. <laughs> Monkey bike, yes. Planning a trip to Canada. Uh, not right now. When we return to normal, love to show you the Rockies. Thank you, Jay's Moto. I would love that um, when I get up that way. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Colorado's on my horizon first uh, once I get to, to go anywhere. Uh, I've been using REI Half Dome too. Yeah! Hi, Pablo! You're in Portland too. That's awesome. Where's this three coming in two weeks? Awesome! Whoa. Uh, Pablo, I am in Portland right now. Um, for those who like seem to be a little bit confused, um, I spend the majority of my time in Portland. This is where my day job is. This is where my significant other lives. We have a house in Portland. And then I inherited my grandmother's house, and that is my home in Montana on my family's property, which is where Rocky Mountain Roll happens. And I go to Montana to home every couple months because I go stir crazy in the city. Um, and I need to see my mountains. <laughs> I was born and raised in Montana. I moved to Portland for art school in 2010. Yeah, dark in the road. Thank you for visiting. That's awesome. Whole oh, we are gaining on an hour, you guys. <laughs> um, if any of you didn't know, Dork in the Road does live streams on Friday, so you should go and head over to his channel after the stream is over and invade his live stream and tell him that I sent you. Um, Dork in the Road is also an Oregon motovlogger. He is super rad. Uh, support. Yes. Ooh. Do, 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 do. Trying to find the questions here if I've missed any. I have watched you fish and was wondering how you packed your pole. Um, Barb, I have a little collapsible fishing pole that my uh, grandpa gave me right before the pilgrimage. It packs about the same length as like a normal tent, um, or normal tent poles because it collapses into itself. It's pretty rad. Um, and then on pilgrimage, I just strapped it on the outside of one of my uh, saddlebags. Please recommend a motorcycle friendly two person tent under $200, Donnie. Uh, go check out Iron Horse, uh, Iron Horse, woo! I need to drink some water. <laughs> Sorry. Donnie, go check out Iron Horse Gear um, on their website. The two-person tent normally is on sale under $200. Um, and if that isn't in your range, uh, go to the nextadventure.net and check out the Wilderness Technology North Duo tent. That's definitely under $200. Is Rocky Mountain Roll open to all? Yes, Jay's Moto Journeys. Rocky Mountain Roll is open to everybody. Whatever age you are, as long as you're above 21, I should amend that. Uh, anybody over the age of 21 is welcome. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're male, female, whatever you identify as, we will welcome you. Um, I don't know why everybody thinks that it's women's only. It's not. <laughs> Love Dork in the Road, yeah! Am I a real motor camper if I watch Netflix in my tent at night? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I think like the first like two times that I went motor camping, I definitely, I loaded movies on my phone because I was afraid that I was going to be bored. Um, I think I only watched like 30 minutes of one of the movies because I was so tired. <laughs> because I seem to can't, I seem not to be able to get into camp like before 6 p.m. Um, and depending on what time of year it is, it gets, it it gets dark pretty fast, uh, so I really only have time to eat and crawl into bed. Heading out this summer for Wyoming, would you recommend East Coast or West Coast? West Coast? Always. I'm biased though. I haven't traveled a whole lot of the East Coast, so I'm not an excellent person to ask that to. But I mean, Utah is a thing, and Utah is gorgeous. Let's see. 
dork on the road. Super rad is pretty generous, but thanks for the shout out. Oh, you are super rad. And humble. <laughs> I'm new to your channel, and when I knew how much you love motorcycles, I started to see your videos because I love motorcycles too. That's awesome, Pablo. Thank you. 40 foot toy hauler. My intent for choice. That's awesome, Charles. I, yes. <laughs> If gas wasn't so expensive for Bubba, I would be doing that. Bubba is my truck, by the way, for context. Business last, I'm in the Amazon. Two person tent for 20, woo, hello chat moving. 20 bucks, definitely a two season tent. <laughs> I'm assuming piston that that means that it's a one wall tent. <laughs> Conversion van is my tent of choice. Yeah, yes. There's a lot of people going the van life route right now, for sure. Thank you, Michael. That means a lot to me. I need to check out the West Coast. Never been. Yeah, Justin. We should just trade places for a little while. <laughs> uh, Piston asks, does it count as motor camping if there is a 40-foot camper next to the bike asking for a friend? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it still counts as camping. Maybe not moto camping. Definitely camping. If you didn't pull the trailer there with the motorcycle, I wouldn't call it moto camping, but it's definitely camping. You listen to Adventure Rider Radio. Um, I have a couple of times. I'm not a big podcast person. I'm way more on the listening to books person than a podcast. Um, yeah. A good two person motorcycle tent is Alps Mountaineering Links 2. Yeah, Alps is a great brand. Uh, lots of great riding on the East Coast, definitely. I mean, like, you guys have Tail the Dragon. <laughs> And the Appalachians are gorgeous. <laughs> Trade places you got. <laughs> I mean, if you come over here, you take care of my cats, though. So, you got it. <laughs> Oh, I'm finally caught up. That's awesome. You're not allowed to run in the generator. <laughs> okay, I'm, now that I'm a little bit caught up, I'm going to answer a couple of the questions that I got initially um, from people who could not be here during the live. Um, Scott Kesner asked me, um, does my significant other help me with my videos? <laughs> that is a no. He does not help. Did I miss a super chat? What just happened? What? Holy bejeebus. Nathan, did you just, or did I miss that? Thank you, Nathan. Oh my God. Holy be, wow. Have I tried any Moscow Moto here? No, I have not. Um, I, uh, before Wolfman, I had um, some cheap, like $80 leather Amazon saddlebags, which were awful and um, some pretty terrible like Amazon off-brand uh, dry bags that ripped pretty immediately on the pilgrimage. Um, and uh, <laughs> I don't recommend cheap dry bags. If you're gonna get a dry bag, they are worth the money. <laughs> like, get a legit dry bag. Um, when I got to Lewistown, uh, the tow truck driver gave me a Cedar Summit dry bag that somebody had abandoned at his shop and that I still have that Cedar Summit dry bag and it's incredible. Um, uh, but no, I have not tried Moscomoto gear. I know that it is awesome. Um, they're a super rad little company. They actually, they're in White Salmon, uh, Washington. They're, they're uh, set up out of White Salmon, Washington. And I've met the owners before. They're super cool. Um, I have a bunch of friends that are supported by them now, including Tim. Tim is supported by Moscow now, which is super awesome. Um, but I am a diehard Wolfman fan. Um, by the way, um, before I forget, uh, my new tank bag came in the mail. Um, it's the brand new Black Hawk waterproof tank bag um, from the new 2020 line uh, from Wolfman. Um, this is what I won for making that tank bag. Uh, if you didn't watch it last week, I made a tank bag out of cardboard and fabric for a contest on Facebook, and I won! And this is my new tank bag, and I'm so excited! <laughs> um, 
This is the map pocket, and you can take the map pocket off, and there's like elastic on the top. There isn't a whole lot to show you from the inside. Just the fact that it's waterproof and awesome, and there's like a little mini pocket here on the top. Um, I haven't even taken the tags off. It's so brand new. It like smells new. You know? Isn't that weird? I don't know if that's weird. But I'm just so stoked. Like this officially means that like all of my gear is waterproof, and I just I'm so excited. Um, I'm gonna order some foam to put into it, cut a hole out for my camera, so my camera actually has a safe place to be. But I'm so excited. Cheap Roche Motel Tank Camping. Ooh. <laughs> you can take care of my cats too. Uh, awesome, Justin. We got a deal. <laughs> Please tell my girlfriend she should try riding solo on her bike. Scott, does your girlfriend like ride on the back? Um, or does she not ride at all? That's my first question for you. <laughs> If she rides in the back and, like, she hasn't gotten the urge to ride her own yet, it's only a matter of time. Um, obviously I don't want to, you know, uh, put any preconceived notions out there, but, like, that seems to be, like, the story with, like, a lot of women that I've met who ride, um, uh, that had a significant other that did ride, like, they'd start on the back and then just kind of got the urge to, like, be in control of their own. Um... Yeah, Smokies. Smoky Mountains are gorgeous. Sorry, I didn't mean to imply that the Tale of Dragon was the only awesome uh, motorcycle road in, on the East Coast. I know that pushes a lot of people's buttons. That's not what I meant. That was just like the first thing that came out of my mouth. I was supposed to start my first bike adventure this week had to cancel because of the crazy world today. I'm sorry, Robert. I hope you get to go on your adventure soon. Here's hoping that we all get through this okay. My coworkers call me trailer trash Bobby when the 40 foot camper is brought out. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my gosh, all the super chats. I'm gonna lose my spot. Where are they? Two up adventures. Oh, thank you guys so much for the super chat. When are you going to come ride the East Coast? Oh, soon. If the world doesn't implode. And if I have enough money. Yeah, <laughs> soon. That's what I'm going to say. Soon. Julie T, keep being awesome. It's been so fun to see you in your adventures. Thank you so much for the super chat. You were amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. All the love. Trying to figure out where I was, sorry. <laughs> what earbuds do you use from Nick? Um, on the pilgrimage, I just used some terrible uh, gas station earbuds because I left the pilgrimage like with the Bluetooth headphones that like, the ones that like sit around your neck and then like they have the earbuds that go up into your ears. Um, I very rapidly broke those. <laughs> they are not helmet friendly. Um, I, uh, got these weird earplugs that like earbuds like wired headphones um that have like the i don't know if you'll understand what i'm saying but like instead of having like, one like round bud like it has like two marks so it's like more noise canceling and those have been really comfortable um i like the first headphones i've ever found that like i can stick in my ears and they don't hurt after three hours um and that's kind of what I had been using. Um, I just got a pair of uh, the Sony WX-1000s. Um, and they're, the, the simplest way that I can say this is like they're Sony's versions of AirPods. Um, so there's no wires and it's just like a little tiny thing that sticks out of your ear. I haven't tried them in the helmet yet, but that's what I bought them specifically for. Um, I kind of have a little bit of a worry that it's going to cause a little pressure headache um, because it does stick out of the ear a little bit. But um, I'm excited about them and at the very least just because uh, they're nice uh, Bluetooth headphones and they're a lot more compact. Like the, con the container is only like this big so I can take that on my trips. Um, I had before like I have like noise canceling over the ear headphones but they're too big to take on the bike um, reasonably. 
and I don't like setting up camp with wires, uh, like trying to figure out what to do with my phone and that kind of stuff. So I'm stoked about those. Best solution for longer haired individuals who keep getting horrible knotted issues while their hair is exposed between jacket and lid. Um, Billy, I braid your hair. <laughs> that, like, that has been my best solution. Um, braid hair, uh, when it's chopped, when my hair gets freshly chopped, like, right here, I don't worry about it. It's, like, literally just my ends that are sticking out of my helmet. Um, it's getting just long enough that I'm, I will have to ponytail it. Uh, um, but yeah, um, another thing that you can do is if it's cold enough to do so, it's not really possible in the summertime, um, to wear a balaclava. Um, so you pull it over your head and then tuck the balaclava into your shirt so that your hair can't escape. Um, that is also an excellent way to keep the hair tame. Yeah, rosemary braid it, definitely. See the summit? Yeah! I'm horrible at braiding my own hair. It's definitely a skill you kind of have to learn. It took me a long time. <laughs> Ask a woman to help, definitely. David, Adventure Radio Radio has Sam in a come. Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm just really not, not a huge podcast, podcast person. New tank bag. Yes! Thank you, Sean. I'm very excited about it. Like Wolf and his company have the Enduro tank bag. But have the Enduro stand Blizzard panniers duffel in there. Amazing quality. 100% waterproof and tough as hell. Definitely. Um, Chris, like the, um, all of the new lineup of Wolfman is 100% waterproof. They, uh, they did a big clear out of all of their older um, stuff, so yeah. Need a video of you installing it, Nick. <laughs> I there isn't a whole lot involved with installing a new tank bag. I'm sorry. <laughs> I already have all of the straps and everything from like all my other Wolfman tank bags, so they strap in just the same way, same clips and everything. So I don't have to do anything and just clip in the new one. It's exciting. Everybody helping Billy out with the hair. That's awesome. <laughs> I have Moscow Moto Egg, uh, Moscow Reckless 80 on the back and the Wolfman tank bag. I love them both. Hope to actually use them someday. That's awesome, Jeff. <laughs> Tore both rotator cuffs. Jeez. Yeah, Rosemary, you're a badass. You're so cool. Dad and Matt is here? How did I miss that? Hi! Hello, Dad and Matt! That's awesome! Thank you for being here! Trying to catch up? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to try the New England BDR. New Yes! Yes, Justin, you should go ride it. Let me know how you like it. I know that's supposed to be a little bit more difficult, um, definitely, than the Mid-Atlantic BDR for sure. Um, I'm excited. I want to try the Mid-Atlantic BDR just because it seems like a super chill, <laughs> chill ride. Oh, thank you. I love all of you because you're all here and you're like my little extended family. It's amazing. Like you guys keep me making videos, like my patrons and you guys keep me making videos because like I know that there's somebody going to be there who cares if I make a video and I just get really excited, especially on trips to like share it with you guys. Like, I do have moments, like, I'm like, oh my god, I need to record this so that I can share it with, like, my little extended family. Like, I just get excited. My wife started on the back at 47. She decided to ride her own. That was 11 years ago. She still gets on the back of the old wing sometimes. That's awesome, Donnie. Yeah, see, yes. Exactly. David. Hi, David. It's good to see you here. Boys, Bose, bleh, I can't even say it. Bose noise canceling Bluetooth make my KLR tolerable and ch uh, charge the last eight hours. That's awesome. Um, do you have any pressure issues, um, David, uh, with your uh, noise canceling headphones? Great. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you guys, we're we're a way over the one hour mark. I'm going to rush through and grab any uh, uh, questions and then we're gonna close out so that I don't overlap with, <laughs> with Dork in the Road. Have you seen the Hightail product? I'm assuming you mean like the weird clasp thing that goes around your hair, right? I've seen that. 
Bye, Piston Slap. Thank you for being here. Don't you have a Cena? I do have a Cena. Um, and I will use that for, like, music. I think I, I think I mentioned in the other Cena video. Um, for audiobooks, like, I can listen to it if I'm going, like, 45. Um, but anything over 45, I can't really listen to audiobooks. Like, I just can't get the audio boost booster to go high enough. Um, for so audiobooks, I listen with headphones in. Um, m music, I normally just listen through the speakers for the Cena. From Manchester. Hi, Andrew. I hope you stay safe too. Off to work. Bye, John. Yeah, I think a bunch of people are taking off. For Rocky Mountain Roll 2021, when would that be, roughly? Um, for 2021, we'll probably the last weekend of July. We or we always aim for the last weekend of July. Brother swooping in with the taco dabs. <laughs> Hi, Robin. It's good to see you in here. Yes, Rosemary is off. Yes, Gary is super talking about what those tacos. Yes, Mid-Atlantic BDR leads straight into the Northeast BDR. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Woo, so many, so many, oh my gosh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, you guys, we're gonna, we're wrapping it up. Hi, Critter, I'm glad that you just, you got to chime in here at the end anyway Michael great to see you doing well you were thank you you guys are awesome I love all of you thank you guys so much for tuning in this was super fun I totally lost track of time uh, <laughs> I guess that happens when you set up a tent in your office I don't know. <laughs> Jeff thank you so much for the super chat you were so rad swooping in at the end here thank you Bye, Amanda. Bye, Rosemary. Bye, first live chat. Had fun. Thank you for being here, Tammy. Thank you. Oh, I love all of you so much. Um, if you didn't see, I think we're going to make this a thing. Um, once a month, we're going to do these live streams. Um, it seems to be that I'm going to do them at the end of the month. Um, so you can expect three videos and then a live stream. Three videos and a live stream. And I think we're going to stick to that until, uh, or at least until I start doing adventures again and I can't do it. Seem reasonable? It seems, seems legit. This is super fun. I love talking to all of you guys. Like this interaction has just been so rad. Um, you guys keep a smile on my face and keep me making videos. Thank you guys. Um, that being said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tune out. I love you. Stay safe. Stay warm. Hang in there. Well, we'll get through it together. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>